Intel's Alder Lake is really close now. And while it's fun theorizing about CPU performance, one piece of the puzzle is often overlooked, and that's the chipset that supports the CPU. A while back, PC Inquisitor leaked a block diagram of Intel's upcoming C690 chipset, and it looks like Intel isn't only trying to attack AMD when it comes to CPU performance, they're also going all out on chipset connectivity and features. In this video, we will first take a look at current mainstream chipsets, Intel's C590 and C490 and AMD's X570, and then compare them to Intel's upcoming C690 chipset. Nowadays, CPUs aren't just CPUs anymore. They are SOCs or systems on a chip. They all offer PCI Express connectivity, USB, and even SATA. If your connectivity needs are satisfied with what your CPU already offers, you wouldn't even need a chipset to begin with. My personal system is kind of the best example here. I'm using a mini ITX motherboard and I'm only connecting a single GPU, one M.2 SSD, one SATA SSD. And on top of that, I only have three USB devices connected, my keyboard, my mouse, and a gamepad. I wouldn't even need a chipset on my motherboard, but sadly, there aren't any motherboards without a chipset. AMD tried something like this when they started out with AIM4, but the A and X300 chipsets never really got adopted into the market. With the release of Zen 2 back in the summer of 2019, AMD not only started to perform really well when it comes to CPU performance, they also got way ahead of Intel when it came to chipset connectivity. Not only did Zen 2 offer 24 PCI Express Gen 4 lanes, the X570 chipset also offered an additional 16 PCI Express Gen 4 lanes. Combined, that's a total of 40 PCI Express Gen 4 lanes. Now, these numbers do lie a little bit because some of those PCI Express lanes are reserved for the connectivity between chipset and CPU. So in reality, of those 24 PCI Express lanes that a Zen 2 CPU offered, only 20 were actually usable for you as a user, mostly in a configuration of 16 lanes for a GPU and then an additional four lanes for a M.2 device directly connected to the CPU. When it came to the chipset, the X570, the 16 PCI Express Gen 4 lanes could be split up between additional PCI Express card or M.2 slots or converted to other connectivity features. But what you have to remember is that those 16 lanes that the chipset provided are actually bottlenecked by how fast the chipset can communicate with the CPU and with an Zen 2 or Zen 3 combination with X570, that connection is limited by four lanes of PCI Express Gen 4. Now, if you were to connect two PCI Express Gen 4 M.2 SSDs to your X570 chipset and you want to read or write with them at the same time, the bandwidth would be severely limited. But since most of the time you only access one drive at a time, it doesn't really matter. Now, if we compare that to what Intel offered with Comet Lake and the C490 chipset at the same time, Intel's offering was quite weak. Not only did the Comet Lake CPU not support Gen 4 PCI Express, it still stayed with Gen 3. It also offered fewer lanes and had only 20 of them. And as with AMD, four of those 20 Gen 3 lanes were used to connect the CPU with the chipset, leaving you only with 16 actual usable lanes from the CPU. That meant if you're connecting a GPU with 16 lanes, there was no space for an additional direct CPU M.2 connection. The four lanes that connected the Comet Lake CPU with the C490 chipset are something that Intel calls DMI 3.0, but it's basically just PCI Express Gen 3. As a result, Intel using the same amount of lanes as AMD, but only Gen 3 and not Gen 4, Intel's chipset was bottlenecked at half the speed compared to AMD. On top of that, the C490 chipset itself didn't even offer any PCI Express Gen 4 connectivity, the same with the CPU. So AMD offered more lanes in CPU and chipset and they offered higher speed, Gen 4 versus Gen 3. I know it wasn't really talked about much back then, but AMD really had the upper hand when it came to connectivity. Only most people, most gamers didn't really notice it because their setups are usually limited to a GPU and a SSD and that's it. Then with Rocket Lake and C590, Intel tried to catch up to AMD. Rocket Lake not only launched Intel's PCI Express Gen 4 support, it also upped the lanes 
from 20 to 24 coming to parity with AMD. That meant starting with Rocket Lake, you could finally start connecting a full GPU with 16 lanes and a full four lane M.2 NVMe SSD at the same time. But Intel's PCI Express Gen 4 support stopped with the CPU. The chipset was still PCI Express Gen 3 only. That meant that the connection between the CPU and the chipset was also still based on Intel's DMI 3.0, but Intel did double the lanes from four to eight. And since eight Gen 3 lanes are as fast as four Gen 4 lanes, that meant that with C590, the connection between the CPU and the chipset was as fast as AMD's offerings. But everything is about to change with all the lake in Intel's upcoming C690 chipset. For the first time in two and a half year, Intel will most likely outclass AMD when it comes to connectivity. Starting with all the lake, the CPU will support PCI Express Gen 5 for the first time. Now as before, there's a difference between the chipset. Intel will bring the chipset up to Gen 4 and only the CPU will support Gen 5 and even there, not all lanes will be fully Gen 5 enabled. So with the CPU, you will have 16 Gen 5 lanes, most commonly used for the GPU. Then you will have an additional four Gen 4 lanes reserved for something like an NVMe SSD. And on top of that, you have an additional eight Gen 4 lanes reserved for the connectivity between the GPU and the chipset. Because Intel is now using PCI Express Gen 4 for chipset and CPU, they also upped their number on their DMI scale. So now it's DMI 4.0, but again, as before, it's just simply PCI Express Gen 4, just in Intel's terms. What's interesting is they do keep the same eight lanes as before. So now C690 will offer eight lanes of connectivity between CPU and GPU, while AMD is still sticking with four lanes, both using PCI Express Gen 4. The Intel C690 chipset itself will offer 12 additional PCI Express Gen 4 and 16 PCI Express Gen 3 lanes. You can repurpose them and add additional cards or M.2 drives or other connectivity. But the main point I want to convey with this video is how much Intel has improved the chipsets over the last two generations. Going from C490 to C590, Intel doubled the connectivity between CPU and chipset from DMI 3.0 X4 to DMI 3.0 X8. And now with C690, Intel will again double the connectivity between chipset and CPU from DMI 3.0 X8 to DMI 4.0 X8. That means within just two generations, Intel increased the connectivity between CPU and chipset by four times as much. Yes, all the lake might be faster too, but the chipset is evolving equally as fast. I know a lot of people are focusing on the Gen 5 aspect of all the lake, but it's not really that interesting to me. If you consider even today, 16 Gen 3 lanes aren't that much slower than 16 Gen 4 lanes and doubling the performance bandwidth again to 16 Gen 5 lanes won't do anything for GPU performance, at least not now. And since it seems like with Alder Lake, the M.2 connectivity will stick with Gen 4, I don't think there will be a PCI Express Gen 5 revolution anytime soon. Though I do wonder if Intel's upcoming Alchemist GPU will support PCI Express Gen 5. It would be a really good marketing opportunity to tell people, look, we have a PCI Express Gen 5 enabled GPU, and now you have to buy a PCI Express Gen 5 enabled CPU in the form of Alder Lake a technology that actually would make quite good use of faster PCI Express connections is direct storage, which basically allows the GPU to directly access a NVMe M.2 drive without going through the CPU. To recap, with all the lake, Intel not only tries to attack AMD on the CPU performance front, they're also going all out when it comes to connectivity. C690 will offer a lot of high-speed connectivity and enable some crazy builds with a lot of PCI Express add-on cards or NVMe M.2 drives. I think it will be interesting to see how it affects the high-end desktop market, which currently has the advantage when it comes to PCI Express expansion. And I'm really interested to see how Intel manages the potential increase in power draw of the C690 chipset. If you remember, AMD had quite some troubles with their X570. My system setup is always pretty minimal, so I'm not really profiting from more lanes, but faster lanes are always nice. I'm interested to hear if your systems are connection heavy, or maybe you could go without a chipset at all, like me. 
As always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like, follow for more content and see you next time.